He's Rob Hunt. And he's Torin Atkinson. And together we're Saturday, Saturday Morning, Morning Cartoon, Cartoon Crunch. Crunch. Today on Saturday Morning Cartoon Crunch, we are going to be discussing 1985's Droids, The Adventures of R2-D2 and C-3PO. Now, this was the cartoon that came out in the mid-80s. Yes. And it had, what was it, 12 episodes and one special, like, double-length, 48-minute episode? Yeah, that's right. It was so only, only a season long, uh, and it was produced by Nelvana on behalf of Lucasfilm and broadcast on ABC. And Nelvana was the studio that also did the animated segment in the Star Wars Holiday Special. Yes, the Star Wars Holiday Special. I've never seen it. I watched about 30 seconds of it was like, this is terrible. I'm sure you can watch it all on YouTube, but if you're going to watch any part of it, the animated segment is definitely far and away the best part of it. The, the interesting thing was, now, there was the Droids cartoon, but there was also an Ewoks cartoon out at the same time. That's right, yeah. And following the original run of... Uh, of droids and Ewoks, they kind of repackaged them into the Ewoks and Droids Adventure Hour. And I was reading that the one reason they really picked these these uh, the, the the droids and the Ewoks for cartoons is a it would be like popular with the young kids because I know you know Ewoks. Yep. But then the other reason was that uh, it was kind of a little bit separate from the real storylines, and they weren't sure if they were going to make any more movies or not. But at least that it was separate enough that it wouldn't in interfere with anything. Right. Because who cares what happens to the droids in the movie? Or maybe George Lucas knew well they're going to survive. Yeah. And that's fine. And nothing <laughs> really matters. important is going to happen to them. So we can t <laughs> tell whatever story we want about the droids and this was set in the 19 year time period in between revenge of the sith and star wars a new hope so of course at the time when they made this they had no idea that revenge of the sith was going to happen uh, and all the prequels were going to happen but otherwise uh, jar jar binks would have been all up in this <laughs> yeah, yeah probably <laughs> Now, the interesting thing over the, the uh, 13, uh, the 12 episodes in the special is they actually teamed up with four different sets of masters. So they had masters the whole time? Yeah, because they're droids, so they have masters. Like, Luke was his master, and Anakin Skywalker was, uh, or Obi-Wan was uh, R2's master for a long time. Um, so this series was, there was no, like, individual episodes that, that uh, or, you know, Monster of the Week, as it were, like, individual standalone episodes Every episode was part of a larger arc, and so it was usually four or five episodes. And uh, the one that we watched was episode number four. Uh, it was called Race to the Finish, and it was like the last chapter in the four-part uh, episode or four-part story arc um, that started the entire uh, cartoon series. And these were like uh, speeder racers, weren't they? Yeah, the characters were, there were two speeder racers and uh, a rebel, a lady rebel. Um, I believe everyone was white and human. <laughs> All the main characters. Just a bit strange for animated series where you don't have to pay for makeup. <laughs> I know. Uh, and and even in this entire series, I found the designs pretty lackluster for Star Wars. Like all the other ancillary characters, the bad guys, the alien mobsters and everything. They're just basically blue with a funny nose. You know, they didn't right. really go over the top and, and make the aliens interesting looking in any way. And so that was kind of disappointing to me. As, so it was like Star Trek original series aliens. Yeah. And like you, <laughs> you're you an animation, you're a cartoon. You can do anything you want. Yeah. And you just go for kind of stock, you know, humanoid characteristics. It's sad. It makes me cry. Yeah, no, that is totally a loss with like, because I, I mean, you could have like intelligent gas clouds with like eyes in it and yeah. and you could be a lot more creative. But I did, I have to say, I do like that they're little like the serialization, like how like the first four episodes are a big story arc. Right. Because that's really popular now. Like even the new uh, South Park's new seasons are all one big storyline kind of thing. Oh, okay. And I, I like that. Like I find the, like a bigger story or narrative is a lot more attractive to me. Yeah, you didn't see that in the eighties, really. No, you know, no, there's no, there's no long story arc on Smurfs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there wasn't. Where you know the rise and fall of Gargamel. Yeah, <laughs> but I think the movies are aren't the Smurf movies a little bit more serious than we expect? Yeah, probably. So, did we want to go over some Star Wars droids trivia? Uh, sure, we can say that the Emperor was mentioned multiple times throughout the series, but uh, never appeared. Uh, the stories were inspired by science fiction stories of Jean... I can't say this. I picked the wrong fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mobius. <laughs> Jean Girard. A.K.A. Mobius. Yes. Several episodes of the series were written by Star Wars sound designer Ben Burt. Ben Burt wrote cartoons. Yes. That's a factoid for He's sure. He's a, a renaissance man. This was among the most expensive cartoon ever produced at, at the time. 
And it basically was canceled because it was too expensive to produce because of high production costs. Wow, I, would, I wouldn't I would guess that. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, I mean, when you compare it with a lot of stuff that was contemporary, the yeah. animation was pretty solid. Yeah. No. There was, when it, one thing that kind of bothered me or just kind of threw me off a little bit was in this cartoon, and this sounds kind of weird, the droids were very cartoony. Like, there was a lot of squash and stretch. They would, Which is like, where they're like, whoa, I'm yeah. surprised. Like, if they moved, like, their their whole head would, like, elongate and the body would squish out and, and their arms would bend. Like, R2's arms would constantly be bending whenever he'd be moving. Right. And that's just kind of a weird, like, I can understand why they did it. And this, uh, because it is a cartoon, so it makes sense that you would make these droids car- car- cartoony. But it, it did throw me off a little bit. Like, I was like, what, that's, what is happening? That's kind of weird. But I mean, I could see that maybe that's probably just a personal thing. Like, it wouldn't bother the kids, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing is, I mean, cartoons nowadays are a lot more of a recognized art form than in the 80s when it's like, ah, it's just kid stuff to sell toys and crap, candy. Yeah. And actually, cereal to sell cereals. There was C3PO cereal. Yes. Were there like a SpaghettiO Star Wars? I think there was. I don't know. There, I'm sure there was Star Wars, like just like today. There's Star Wars everything. You get Star Wars douches and Star Wars uh, pregnancy <laughs> um, tests. May the force be with you, <laughs> <laughs> cleansing you. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention was in the opening titles of this cartoon, there's a song. Right. And this song, it's not a terrible song. It's written by Stuart Copeland and performed uh, from the police. But it does not fit it's Star Wars in any way. It's kind of like a new wave, poppy kind of, it's called Trouble Again. Yeah, I actually, when you sent me the episode to watch, I was a little confused because uh, I was like, had somebody just edited their own version of it? Because it, it's not it's not orchestral. Yeah. It's not electronic in any way, which is are like things I would pick for a sci-fi thing. About droids, yeah. yeah. Like the only time I've ever heard an acoustic song pulled off for like a sci-fi series is I didn't mind the Enterprise intro. Oh. <laughs> it, I didn't mind it. <laughs> I, wasn't, I didn't say I liked it. But yeah. yeah, I was like watching this like, wow, they really didn't, they really cheaped out on this. But like from the police? <laughs> yeah, that was a weird choice. And I don't agree with it. But what can you do? Yeah. C-3PO in this series, um, he's kind of a bumbling idiot, which is true of the movies as well. But it's weird that whenever there's any kind of consequences where he saves the day or, you know, does something that moves the plot along, it's always an accident. He's always tripping over something or doing a pratfall. And I find that to be um, sad. Now, it's the same voice, isn't it? Did we mention it's the same voice yeah. for C-3PO? Uh, Anth- oh, that's right. Anthony Daniels, uh, who did C-3PO in the movies and everything, he, of course, reprised his role um, for this uh, cartoon. Great. Well, let's get started and have the cereal. Absolutely. Well, we couldn't get any C-3PO's. If we did get C-3PO's, Rob, they would be very stale. Because <laughs> 20. they haven't been made since the 80s. <laughs> Yikes. But we do have this limited edition General Mills Star Wars cereal. Mmm. Um, they do come with different cover- covers. Here oh, is, this is my uh, favorite. Ray mm. from The Force Awakens. Uh, we didn't get the BB-8 one, sadly. And this is a fruity flavored cereal with marshmallows and other natural flavors. So to me, this is one of the like Lucky Charms genre of cereals. Yeah, it's um, corn-based or wheat-based? It is corn-based. I think everything is corn-based now. Corn-based. And we're going to see if the force is with us uh, in uh, Star Wars. It has almost no smell. No? Oh, ooh, there's a faint. Oh, let me smell that again. That smells familiar. What one does that smell like? I haven't eaten that. Almost as maybe a corn pops. There are five different marshmallow shapes. Yes, there's BB-8. There's R2-D2. There's a Jedi Starfighter, which is just a red arrowhead. And there's a lightsaber marshmallow and a stormtrooper helmet marshmallow. And I'm sure they all taste exactly the same. How does it look? Um, it looks okay. Oh, and the bits, the corn bits, are TIE Fighter shaped and... X-Wing. X-Wing shaped. And there's also like a U. Or maybe that's just a factory defect. (laughs) Anyway, chow down on this. I'm going to force it down my throat. That's what she said? It's It's a Star Wars joke. Oh, right, sorry. Sweet, kind of bland, like the smell. Yeah, no, uh, it's actually good because we uh, when we had uh, meat stick on and we were eating the the O's, 
They were very strong. The crunch factor is... It's not going to cut the inside of like my mouth. It's like 5 out of 10. A 10 out of 10 leaves you the roof of your mouth cut. 10 out of 10 would be a Captain Crunch. This is like Junior Lieutenant Crunch. <laughs> Stormtrooper Crunch. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like the marshmallows. They could It could do with more marshmallows. Yeah, the marshmallow uh, selection is... Or the ratio is very sparse. There's not a lot of marshmallows in there. I don't know how I feel about this cereal. I um, it's not doing much for me. I gotta say, it's not overpowering though. I found that um, some of the cereals I've had recently, the kid cereals, the flavor is so strong that by the like the first bowl, you already have the awful aftertaste, and you just you like the blandness of the Star Wars cereal. Yeah, the Force. It's just like the. It's just like being a Jedi, right? Like you're not really allowed any strong emotions. <laughs> or like, yeah. This is a Jedi. Bruce. You, you can't marry. You can't fall in love. <laughs> you uh, can't have a super sweet cereal. And you, your cereal must all. Yeah, it's very ascetic. Yeah, it's uh, the blandness, <laughs> especially made for Jedi's. Star Wars brand cereal. I, I definitely won't fall in love with this cereal. <laughs> No. But I won't hate it either, which isn't like it hate like leads to the dark side. Yes. <laughs> hate leads to suffering. <laughs> suffering leads to more bowls of Star Wars cereal. <laughs> oh. So if you had to, so here's the question. We've had the Star Wars cereal, we watched the Star Wars cartoon. Droids. Uh, which do you prefer? If you had to have either a bowl, another bowl of Star Wars cereal, or watch another episode of Droids. Which would you rather do? Uh, the droids. I really like the serialized four-part episodes. I like that's that's yeah. I'll probably watch the rest of the series while editing these these episodes. Yeah, I don't even think I can finish this bowl of Star Wars cereal. No, me neither. The force is not with us. No. Run, Luke. Run away from Star Wars cereal. Stand on a hillside and wait for some <laughs> girl who could be your daughter or could be your best friend and your sister's daughter. That's it from Saturday Morning Cartoon Crunch today. I'll leave you with this quote from George Lucas. Oh, the Star Wars world is much easier to deal with in animation. You can be much more flexible in the development of ideas. Uh, which is a shame that uh, a lot of the droids' um, designs were very boring and flat and uh, lackluster. But now the new Star Wars cartoons are really good. Yes, but we'll talk about that in another episode. So that was a little burn on George Lucas, but maybe it'll all turn around for Star Wars Rebels or Star Wars Clone Wars. Thanks for joining us. See you next time! I'm not even going to pretend to finish this. <laughs> I'm just going to have the marshmallows. Yeah, no, I'm going to dig out the marshmallow. There's dig one left. The marshmallows. Saturday morning, Saturday morning.